You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. I feel like who Art Ed? Try to spice it. Who Art Ed? Mr. Wood, <laughs> Art Ed, me. Yeah. Either way, it, 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 it works on so many levels. I know. That's off to a great start. Welcome to Who Arted Weekly Art History for All Ages. I'm your host, Kyle Wood. Now, for those of you who listen to my other show, Art Smart, I think it's no secret that I am a big fan of praying art materials. When I planned my season about different art media, I reached out to Prang for some interviews because I just used their stuff in my classroom all the time. I can't believe in all that time I spent talking to my buddies over there, I never realized that Louis Prang, the company's namesake, did more than produce quality art materials. I always like to be transparent, so while I did interview people from Prang for ArtSmart about a year ago... I have never been paid by them, and this episode came about as I was searching for different fun facts. I discovered that Louis Prang not only invented the artist's color wheel popular today, he's also known as the father of the American Christmas card. Kind of an odd title given that he was born in Prussia back in 1824. Now, Prang was destined to leave an indelible mark in the art world with his warm, friendly holiday greetings and his passion for art education. Growing up, Louis' artistic talent was nurtured by his parents. His father was in textile manufacturing and taught him engraving, printing, and dyeing. As a young apprentice, Prang honed his skills. He developed an acute eye for detail and appreciated the merging of artistry and craftsmanship. Now, he did travel to some different areas within Europe for a little bit, learning some different techniques. He was also a little bit involved in some revolutionary action. Um, Unfortunately, it was a failed revolution. And so in 1850, he came over to the United States. Within a year, he was working for Gleason's Magazine, making wood engravings for illustrations. He worked his way up in the print world, and in 1856, he and a partner opened a printing shop in Massachusetts, largely focusing on lithographs of local buildings and towns. In 1860, he actually bought out his partner, making it L. Prang & Company. The company became really successful during the American Civil War as they began printing maps of battles distributed by newspapers. He secured contracts to produce high-quality patriotic cards for the soldiers and civilians. His meticulous attention to detail and ability to capture the sentiment of the era elevated his company above competitors. The success of these wartime cards laid the foundation for a business that would thrive and extend well beyond the battlefield. In 1864, Prang traveled to England to learn the latest techniques in chromolithography, which I believe he was learning from German printmakers in England for some reason. But for those of you who are unfamiliar, chromolithography is full-color lithography. A lot of printmakers at that time, probably the vast majority of printmakers, were just doing black and white. If they wanted a color image, they would make a black and white print and then hand color on that image, kind of like a giant coloring book. If you're not familiar with lithography, it's a printmaking technique often using a giant block of limestone or sometimes a metal plate, like a stamp. An image will be created on the printing plate using an oily material, like a grease pencil. Now, I'm not going to get too deep into the weeds with the gum arabic and the acid, but simply put, the litho stone has some areas that will accept ink and others that will reject it. The stone is inked, paper is pressed to it, and you get a print. Multicolored prints need a stone for each color. Now, Prang viewed color lithography as not simply reproducing art, but an art form in and of itself, and he would do what he had to in order to get it right. Some designs would require as many as 20 stones to capture all of the colors, but the results were stunning and well beyond anything his competitors were producing. And Prang had learned to produce high-quality, full-color lithographs. He applied these methods to cards and maps. He also made prints of great works of art by painters, including Winslow Homer. 
But his biggest hit came in 1875, as Prang found himself at the forefront of a new and heartwarming tradition, the Christmas card. Inspired by a custom he observed in England, Prang set out to create the first Christmas card in the United States. It didn't come from Hallmark. They weren't around until about 1915. In 1875, his vision came to life with the printing of a festive holiday card that quickly became a cultural phenomenon. The first card was a simple bunch of flowers with the words Merry Christmas. And if you're listening on Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or anywhere else supporting episode-specific cover art, you'll be able to see it on the cover art for this episode. While he did not invent the Christmas card, that distinction went to Henry Cole back in, I believe it was 1843. What Prang did was make it accessible. There were some people making Christmas cards in England, as I said, but it was a much more labor-intensive process, often hand-coloring and making them very expensive. Prang brought high-quality printed cards to America at a price many people could afford. It was just $0.10 for a small card, maybe a dollar for a larger one. And people loved these cards. By the 1880s, Prang was printing 5 million Christmas cards a year. And he was also running annual design contests from 1880 to 1884, um, he offered prizes of $1,500, 300 and $200 for the top four designs. And I got to say, hats off to him. He you know, was not only pulling these beautiful designs from talented artists, the contests also made it a bit more of a spectacle and event as he was unveiling the designs and he had judges who were well-known people, including Tiffany of like, you know, the Tiffany lamps and designs. Prank's Christmas cards really were the leading brand. I mean, Prang was in some ways almost synonymous with Christmas cards in America. These cards, adorned with intricate illustrations and heartfelt messages, they not only captured the spirit of the season, I would argue they actually helped to define the spirit of the season as people used the cards to connect with loved ones. The cards became a cherished part of the American holiday tradition, symbolizing the warmth of connection and the joy of giving. As the popularity of his greeting cards soared, Prang actually experienced a shift in his priorities. He was driven by a deep-seated belief in the transformative power of art, and he redirected his focus toward art education. Understanding the need to nurture creativity from a young age, Prang embarked on a mission to make art accessible to all. In 1876, he actually created the artist's color wheel. His arrangement of the three traditional primary colors with secondary and tertiary colors in between is, is still probably the most widely used tool for teaching basic color theory. He pioneered art education initiatives, developing instructional materials and promoting the integration of art into the school curriculum. He also began producing high-quality art materials for students to utilize in their classrooms. Prank's commitment to fostering creativity extended beyond the confines of his company. He's left an enduring legacy that we still feel the impacts of today. This concludes this week's episode of Who Arted, part of the Airwave Media Podcast Network. If you found this tolerable, please leave a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. You can find images of the work being discussed this week and every week on social media at Who Arted Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And of course, on the website, whoartedpodcast.com. Podcast done.